Hey, what's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic. And today, uh, obviously you probably heard by now that Sony has announced the 16 to 35 F4 power zoom. And then you're probably thinking, wait, well, Sony already has an F4 lens in 16 to 35. Why aren't they producing another one? Well, listen here, my friends. Sony has actually upgraded a whole bunch of their internals in this lens to make it lighter, to make the autofocus faster, and there is a power zoom. So that could actually work very well with video shooters, specifically FX3 and the FX6. So yes, this is a G lens, so don't get it confused with the G Master range. It is a little bit cheaper, it's a little bit slower when it comes to the aperture. The image performance is still really great. There is a little bit of a con when it comes to that wide angle and distortion. And I know this is probably like the 15,000th video you're watching today on this lens because, well, the embargo's dropped, so we all release it at the same time. But we're gonna be talking about that wide angle distortion. We're gonna be talking about the fast autofocus, internal zoom, all the customizable buttons on here, and is this this worth your money but we're gonna be talking about this in this video so one of the greatest things about this right here is that it has internal zoom so that is really good if you are working on a gimbal mainly for the fact that if it does extend from the barrel like the older version of a 16 to 35 it's gonna throw the gimbal a little bit out of balance and if it's not balanced correctly then it could overload the gimbal and just not perform as steady as you want it to perform because with gimbals you want to have full flexibility of uh, getting it to the right position. You want it to be able to perform exactly how you want it to perform and not overload. So yeah, that is one of the greatest things about the new 16 to 35 PZ lens. So I took this one on a photo shoot, took it on a video shoot and a couple of other occasions as well. I'm not a vlogger, but this lens would actually be really good for vlogging, mainly for the fact that a lot of people like to use that 16 to 20 to 24 mil sort of focal length when it comes to vlogging. So this is pretty much what it looks like at 16 millimeters if you were to vlog. So so it's in my hand right now. This is what you can actually see. Obviously with 16 millimeters, you get so much more in frame. And obviously when it comes to vlogging, that is a really good thing, especially well, this, this is my wall. A lot of people have been asking pretty much what is on my wall, what's the setup like? We're gonna get into that in another video, but let's get back into talking about this lens. So the Sony 16 to 35 F4 is the world's lightest full frame F4 wide angle power zoom lens. It has a high resolution in an ultra light compact G lens at 353 grams. It has the new power zoom system using the XD linear motors delivering responsive and quiet zoom operations. It has a minimum focusing distance of 24 centimeters. It has an internal zoom function so it doesn't extend outside the barrel. It has a front filter diameter of 72 millimeters. It has an auto to manual focus switch, a custom button, a zoom rocker on the left hand side, an aperture ring that is also able to de-click, and an iris lock. So what do you guys think of this wide angle lens? I'm actually using the 24 G Master right now. I usually use the 35 G Master and push it a little bit further back, but this, I can actually do some product stuff and get quite close. But I don't know, what do you guys think? 24 mil, I actually really like it. So let's get into the photos and see how this thing performs in the image quality test. So this is the widest at 16 millimeters at f4 and we go into the center and you can see it's absolutely tack sharp. We go out to the corners and it is nice and sharp out in the corners as well. But obviously, let's address the elephant in the room. That distortion is crazy. There is currently no profile corrections in Lightroom as of yet, but if you do choose the 24 mil f2.8, you can fix it a little bit, add a little bit more distortion correction to it as well if you desire. But it really depends on you at the moment, but there will be a profile corrections in there when Lightroom does an update. So we stop it down to f4.5 and you can notice it's still tack sharp in the center and out in the corners as well. But let's change over to 20 millimeters in the center. It's nice and sharp. There still is that distortion on the outside there as well. On the outside corners, it is nice, tack sharp, high contrast as well. Now we go to 35 millimeters and into the center. It's not crazy sharp, but it's still relatively sharp there going out to the corners and you're nice and sharp out in the corners. And you can see here there's minimal distortion in the image. Now we jump over to these images and you can see the distortion in these images at the wide angle at 16 millimeters. This is landscape photography and a lot of landscape photographers will wanna try and get as wide as possible. So you can notice the distortion here. But if you are taking some really cool architecture photography, this could be a really cool lens to have. And you can see here, it is most definitely not a portrait lens because if you do chuck the portrait lens on, there's gonna be a lot of distortion. Body parts are gonna be elongated. It's just not going to look as pleasant as say like a 50 mil or an 85 millimeter lens. 
And in this shot, you can actually tell the distortion in the building here with the barrel distortion. And like I said, it's not going to be a really good portrait lens, but for a wide architecture lens, it's probably not gonna be great as well unless you put some lens corrections on. Now, I think one of the greatest features on this thing, and I hope they roll this out with all other G Master lenses, is the iris lock. So it's got a little iris lock on the bottom there that you can actually lock this iris because sometimes you can actually knock it when it's in your bag and then it's down to F22 straight up because the A mode is right next to F22. Uh, that can just stop it from accidentally turning when you're trying to use it or it's you know fumbling around on your side if you're a wedding videographer this could be a really good feature to have just so you don't have to click it back into that auto mode and then go through your camera now I know what's gonna concern a lot of people is that these ice lens had OSS, optical steady shot. This one doesn't have OSS, they took it out to make it lighter and obviously the focusing system is a lot different in this one. So is it going to be nice and stable? Let's actually do a couple of tests with walking, handheld, with IBIS on and then one with active steady shot on as well. And we can see if this is actually going to be steady or not when it comes to vlogging and handheld stuff. But spoiler alert, I already know that this is going to be stable enough because IBIS in the Sony cameras is going to be enough, but this is designed to be flying on a gimbal anyway. So this is me vlogging at 16 millimeters just with regular IBIS. Now the best thing to do is take notice of the corners uh, to see how shaky this is going to be. And I'm gonna put it into active stabilization right now. So this is active stabilization. I'm not doing any ninja walking. This is me vlogging, 16 millimeters, nice and normal. So what do you guys think? Check out the corners so you can see the difference between the last one and this one. So when it comes to video autofocus, like this thing is absolutely snappy. I think it's pretty much one of the fastest lenses out there. And what Sony actually told me in one of the Zoom calls is that it actually has magnetic systems inside, which is actually how it all works. And essentially they've got less elements that do more jobs rather than more elements in there that do less jobs. So that's how they're able to make it much more lighter and faster and more responsive as well. The great thing about this autofocus system is that when you click it into manual focus right here on the side, it actually has a linear motor so if you are doing repetitive focus pulls with manual it's going to be just like your G Master lenses and pretty much perfect. It is so good for video shooters. That is probably one of the biggest reasons why you would get this lens is the fact that you can actually do some repetitive focus pulls with this in manual mode. And if you do use power zoom a lot on your camera and you probably know that when you go to 35 millimeters and then you start going above, it'll go into that 1.1, 1.2 times clear image zoom. So you can actually use clear image zoom on top of this and get a little bit more reach when it comes to this lens. And the FX3 users will probably like this mainly for the fact that there is that power zoom rocker on the right hand handle. That is a very good feature on that one. And you do actually have that on the FX6 as well. So when it comes to run and gun people, this could be a great lens to use. So one of the biggest things that the Sony rep actually brought up to me that this is actually going to be suited towards hybrid shooters. So people who are photographers and videographers, because they obviously are starting to realize that a lot of people using the alpha cameras are photographers and videographers. So they really need to keep up with the autofocus system like what they have in the a7 IV and the alpha one as well, because a lot of the lenses can't actually keep up with that 30 frames per second in photography. Whereas these ones are starting to get a lot faster with that XD linear drive and really keep up with those high burst frame rates. Now I think another good feature of this, and it could be a pro or a con, it really depends on your shooting style, but there are no hard stops. Whereas the Tamron lens, you actually have physical hard stops when it comes to the 17 millimeters or the 28 millimeters. This one is purely done internally with magnets. And that comes down to your shooting style. It really depends on if that is a pro or con for you. Now it's small, it's light, it's compact, it's fast autofocus. It has really good image quality besides that wide angle uh, distortion, but you know, that can be corrected in post when it comes to photography. But it really depends on your shooting style if this is going to be suiting you. But overall, I do recommend it. It's a great lens, especially if you are after a very cheap, you know, affordable F4 lens. It is much better than the previous version. But if you do want that uh, F2.8 range, that's when you'll probably step up to the 16 to 35 G Master lens and get the F2.8. 2.8 because you know shallow depth of field it's still got really nice fast autofocus as well it is a bit heavier than this one uh, but if you are a gimbal shooter this is probably something to look into because of that internal zoom and the fast autofocus system so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up that would be absolutely amazing subscribe to my youtube channel already if you haven't and uh i'll see you guys in the next one all right let's get it